Court orders release of SOPs. Local activists sue state over excellence flaring. And Guyana goes backwards when it comes to going green. I am Noriko Bullfort, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Before we begin, do you have something important you want to leak without revealing your identity? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Acting Chief Justice Roxanne George Wiltshire has given Lowenfield 10 days to hand over the statements of poll and statements of recount to the police for trial of the charges laid against persons accused of being involved in the big rig of 2020. As it turns out, Lowenfield is just one of those who were charged. The Chief Justice's decision also prevented him from blocking the release of the documents. In fact, she specifically noted that the documents are a matter of public record and there could be no good reason for not releasing them in the interest of fair and open justice. But of course there's a good reason if you have something to hide. Today, the two Brazilian drug runners who were busted with over half a ton of cocaine face charges of illegal entry and trafficking. 65-year-old Salim Nobrega de Alimsa and 30-year-old Andre Pereira both pleaded not guilty to the charges. The prosecution objected to bail as the men are flight risks. They are currently on remand until their next court date. Locally, two activists are currently in the midst of a court case that is expected to have implications for the nation's oil industry. Scientist and dean of the Faculty of Natural Sciences at UG, Troy Thomas, and conservationist Quadad de Freitas have filed an auction against the state in response to Exxon's continued flaring on the Lisa destiny. They argue that since pollution is hazardous, not only to the environment, but also the health and well-being of citizens, it is the state's duty to stop it. The two also argue that Article 149J of the Constitution require it to refrain from authorizing activities that would contribute significantly to climate change, ocean acidification, and or sea level rise. While this is an international story, I'm certain that this too will have a huge impact on our nation's oil industry. Several weeks ago, we reported that an activist hedge fund, Engine Number 1, was in the process of what is well, basically what could be described as a hostile takeover of Exxon's board of directors. Well, as of yesterday, their campaign to force the American neocolonialist overlords to embrace renewable energy has gained a huge victory. Shareholders elected two of the fund's four nominated directors to the oil giant's 12-member board. While they haven't gotten CEO Darren Woods fired as yet, the hedge fund still is gunning for his job, as Woods is staunchly anti-renewable energy. However, Woods argues that the group are just overreacting, as the company was already diversifying away from fossil fuels, and Exxon should not jeopardize its profits in doing so. Nevertheless, engine number one has a $50 million stake in the $250 billion company. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2009 Toyota Axio. It comes with mug rims, new tires, DVD, stereo, reverse camera, and much more. Buy cash for $2.7 million, or pay down as low as $540,000 with around $61,000 monthly for four years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lamar Street, and tell them Eureka sent you for this sweet deal. The Northwest District, the Rupununi, Bartica, Blackbush Polder, Myconi, and the West Bank. No, I'm not giving everyone shout-outs. These are all the areas of the nation that are currently underwater in some way, shape, or form. Heavy rainfall over a 24-hour period, coupled with the spring tide, resulted in several communities in regions 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9 to be inundated by floodwaters. While the floodwaters were only a few inches in depth, it was enough to damage hundreds of homes, businesses, farms, and livestock across the nation. The CDC has already begun sending assistance to the most heavily damaged communities. Last night, 41-year-old GRA security guard Norma Rose was fatally struck down in quarantine by a drunken hit-and-run driver. 
32-year-old taxi driver and part-time drunken mess Danny Nanku was speeding down the 77 public road when he knocked down Rose as she was standing at the side of the road. She was pronounced dead on arrival. Nanku was caught two villages down the road. He's currently in police custody. Yesterday, amateur weed trafficker Floyd Adonis was busted during a roadblock in Fort Wellington. According to the police, Adonis was a passenger of a minibus that was searched for contraband. When they discovered the bag full of 10 pounds of ganja, the driver did not hesitate for a second to call out Adonis on the cannabis. Adonis is currently awaiting trial. Are you a truck owner that is losing money due to downtime or you wait for your parts to be imported? Now that's just stupid. Truck parts are already in Guyana at powered automotive truck spares and engine parts. They stock spares for DAF, Bedford TM, International Freight Liners, and Cummins Engines. Check them out at 1161 EE -E Eccles or WhatsApp them at telephone number 6970171. Tell them Mariko sent you and get a discount. It's now time for today's run report. Today, the nation recorded 98 new cases. There are now 376 persons dead, 24 persons in the ICU, and 1,922 persons in home isolation. The total number of confirmed cases in the nation now stands at 16,654. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds, and remember to give six feet of space between you and others. The cops are looking for three men who jumped a 22-year-old man at good intent, West Punk, while he was heading home late last night. While the man was walking home from a shop, three men jumped out of the bushes and beat him with a piece of wood before fleeing. They didn't take anything, but they did leave him laying injured in the roadway. He has since been discharged from the hospital. Do you want to grow your money? Sell Digicel Top Up. Become a top up vendor through Cellular Plus and make some extra cash to supplement your income at your business or your side hustle. Call 685 3109 for more info. A 55 year old man from St. Ignatius Village in central Rupununi was found dead in his friend's yard shortly after a drinking spree, one which his doctor specifically banned him from having in the first place. According to the cops, he was last seen drinking on Tuesday at the friend's house. This was even after his doctor told him not to drink following his recent surgery. After collapsing, he was taken to the Lettum Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Nevertheless, the police arrested the friend cause hey, why not? The whole thing makes no sense anyway. And now for our stupid news of the day. The evidence is clear. Renewable energy costs are falling by the day. Currently, it's on par with fossil fuels. But by the end of the decade, renewables are expected to be far cheaper than using fossil fuels altogether. So while larger nations and even some of our Caribbean neighbors are leading the push to go green, we are preparing to spend close to 1 billion US dollars on a natural gas energy project that will have our nation's electrical supply literally attached to the hip with Exxon's oil project. To make matters worse, the average citizen seems to not even care either. Did you know that you can import an electric car completely duty-free? In fact, most electric cars are far cheaper than petrol. At current GPL rates, it takes less than $1,000 worth of power to recharge the batteries on an average electric car that will have about a 200-mile range, enough to take almost two round trips between town and Linden. But most town folk wouldn't dare buying an electric car because they're afraid the batteries will die while they're stuck in traffic. Guyana is small enough that we can make a fully modern electrical grid to supply electric cars and industry and other forms of transportation. And all of this can be powered with renewable energy, solar, wind, water, even waste to energy is an option. Well, not an eco-friendly one, but it gets rid of our garbage problem, so at least that's nice. Anyway, I can go on and on, but if you ask me, going backwards to a petrol-based economy while everyone else is going towards a green future is pretty stupid. Hey, Guyanese business people, are you looking for a great way to advertise your business? Search no more. Join one of the fastest growing business directories in Guyana. Register your business on snap.gy and get access to more eyeballs. And wait for the best part, it's absolutely free. Get your business listed today on snap.gy. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. 
Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, do you support the government's decision to build a new city on the Suicide Highway, or would that money be better spent elsewhere? Kurt Beckles says that we should consider creating an economic zone for international companies to enhance competition, but he hopes they won't be too biased with making land available for all Guyanese in the new city. Leah Cole says, who doesn't love a new city? Ah, that new city smell. Can't wait. Neither can I, Leah. Arminoff Passard said, the government needs to focus on a region that is more populated to build the second city, or even in a region that needs jobs the most. Harry Gurwa has a similar line of thinking. He thinks that the government instead should choose to build the city in Region 6 with a focus on building infrastructure, such as a new airport. And finally, Crocodile Knot thinks that they should look to the mountains instead. That way, people could enjoy living and working in the city, but have weekend breaks to the mountains. Wow, that sounds wonderful. So for tonight's question, how do you think the change up in Exxon's board of directors will affect Guyana? Or do you think it won't have any effect at all? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in Friday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Boldford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now.